I'm John Bartlett and I'm the Chair of Trustees of the Renewed Hope Trust, which is a local charity working in East Surrey, um, particularly looking at a relief of poverty and homelessness in the area. And we've been going now, well, this, will, this will be our seventh winter that we've run a winter night shelter, so that gives you an idea of how long we've been going. The way we started was it, it grew out of a group called Street Pastors who, were, who go out late at night um, on usually Friday nights looking for folk who are in trouble. And we kept coming across homeless folk and there was nowhere to send them in East Surrey. So some of the guys got together, one of whom was the uh, then captain of the Salvation Army in Red Hill, and he opened a drop-in two days a week uh, at the Salvation Army Centre. Mm -hmm. And that's how he started eight years ago. Um, and that eventually uh, the local authority in Brigate and Banstead uh, asked that group would we consider opening a, a winter night shelter. So seven years ago we had our first one of those and that just ran for six weeks. And it was mainly people who were coming out of prison at that stage um, who had nowhere to go and they came out from release and that was our sort of pilot scheme. And then subsequent to that we run it 12, 13 weeks every winter. Um, with a whole variety of folk coming in from what I call the youngsters of sort of eight, late teens, early 20s, right through to folk who are in their 60s and 70s. So you provide work experience for unemployed and also ex-offenders by encouraging them to participate in running this drop-in centre. Work experience is rather a grand title for uh, um, encouraging people to to volunteer with us um, so they can do sometimes a bit of cooking a bit of clearing up uh, washing up that sort of thing just so that everyone mucks in together and it's not uh, divine between volunteers and guests so uh, in that sense it's 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 an experience of getting up off your backside and doing something and I see from your website that uh, you're looking for certain items to be donated Yes, um, we are particularly interested in people donating food um, because that's important to, uh, to feed the people here. We, we try and run a, a lunch um, midweek, uh, all week, um, and also a lunch now on Sundays. Uh, we've got the food for the winter night shelter that uh, needs to uh, be provided if uh, the churches that are hosting it don't do that, so they, although most of them do. Um, so there's, there's lots of opportunities for that. Um, people come in sometimes needing a uh, change of clothing, hats, gloves, socks, pants, trousers, coats, you name it, people need it. And uh, uh, we have a sort of limited capacity for how much we can store, mm -hmm. but uh, we, we like to have a, a, a resupply of that sort of stuff. Um, then there's things like toiletries. Um, in homeless people, you know, still got teeth they want to clean, still want to go to a shower and use some soap, still want to use shampoo. So all that sort of stuff is useful as well because uh, every now and then we're able to get them to go somewhere that can get a, a wash and brush up. They don't like to smell. They want to be clean like anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so we look for that sort of stuff as well. So roughly how many people come into the drop-in centre each day? It varies. Uh, it's over the last few months, we've, we've probably averaged between... 12 and 20 uh, coming in most days. So 20 on a, on a day when you know, people get about out and get in. Uh, 12 perhaps on a cold day where they can't get out of their sleeping bag where they've holed up for the night. Um, so it's, uh, it's uh, an interesting one, that, to see just how many do come in. That's still 20. That's still one too many people on the streets, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, no, none of the folk who come into us want to be homeless. Uh, they're, they're all folk who, uh, for one reason or another, sort of fallen foul of, uh, I don't know, a tenancy or an arrangement at home or something like that, or maybe they've been sick and just uh, lost uh, the ability to pay a rent mm -hmm. or whatever it is, and they suddenly find themselves out on the street. And once you're on the street, it's, it's difficult to get back off it. Uh, there's not much out there, particularly in an area like this where rents are so high. So the volunteers that help out, uh, do they need to be police checked at all or have any experience working with homeless people? No, you just need a, a heart for the homeless, really. Um, uh, strangely, homeless people are not classified as being vulnerable. Uh, that might seem strange to people, but that's, that's, the, real, that's the, uh, the legal reality. Um, so we don't need to um, do uh, various checks you need for that. Um, but we do, obviously, 
vet or look at our volunteers who come in to see what they have, are they suitable to work with these people. Um, so we we weed out those who we feel are not really suitable. Uh, the reality is there's actually very, very, very few of those um, because most people are actually able to, to chat, to befriend, mm -hmm. to, to make a cup of coffee um, and to just generally help. It's not difficult. Uh, there's no special skills needed just to be in a family. And this is what we have here. We have a family or a community of people who come in, all know each other. And if someone else comes in, we welcome them, sit them down and uh, get on with it. So can anyone volunteer? I mean, do they have to be part of a church or um, of what age range as well are you looking for? They don't have to be part of a church. Um, we are a Christian charity and a lot of our volunteers do come from churches, but that's not exclusive. Uh, we have folk who go, don't go to church at all. We have folk from other religions of all sorts who come in to help and that's, that's very welcome. Uh, we like people to be over 18. Um, really to, to help because that uh, means we haven't got responsibility for looking after children and young persons here. And everything costs money. Do you receive any funding at all? A limited amount of funding for our winter night shelter. Um, the local housing uh, departments in both Tanridge District and Rygate and Banstead uh, provide something for, that, for their winter night shelter. Outside of that, all our money comes from churches, uh, from private individuals, and from other groups who raise money for us. And can you tell me whereabouts you're based, please? Our base is here at the back of the West Central Cafe um, in Redhill at 3 London Road. And that's so we have a, a, a kitchen that we have use of back here that we rent, and we have some desks upstairs that we, we do our, our admin at. And uh, recently, we've uh, taken a lease on an old chapel in Redhill, the Shrewsbury Chapel in Shrewsbury Road, mm -hmm. where we're doing a Sunday lunch now. Um, so folk can come in there and get a lunch on a, on a Sunday at, at one o'clock. If they're, so if anyone's at a loose end on a Sunday, hasn't got a Sunday lunch, come and visit us. Can I ask you, talk about the winter night shelter. Do you have anything going around all year round, or is it just over the winter months? No, it is just winter months. It, it's what it says on the can, a winter night shelter. Yeah. So we try to cover the worst months of the year. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're opening this year on the 13th of December and finishing on the 7th of March, because mm -hmm. we find that that sort of three-month period, 12, 13 weeks, is the, is the worst part when uh, people really need to get off the street because it's very cold. Mm -hmm. It's actually very cold now, but uh, usually, the, historically, those have been the worst months. I mean, the council is, is, is good, I think, at um, its emergency provision when the temperature goes down below zero. But obviously, if we're running, they can direct people to us. We usually have about 12 places or so. And we take referrals from local housing and from uh, other organisations so that we know who we're getting. Uh, they have to have a local connection to Red Hills. We can't just take people from anywhere. Yeah. Uh, Red, that's Red Hill or Tandridge. We receive them and, uh, and take them into wherever we're having the shelter that night. Uh, it's, it's a floating shelter, mm -hmm. so it goes around a different church every night, um, and you need to be, you have to be referred to find out where it is. <laughs> so that covers the winter months. What do they do the rest of the year, just maybe hopefully find shelter where they can? Well, we work with folk to get them into housing, um, so we have a lot of links with local housing organisations. Mm -hmm. uh, I think last year, out of, um, I think it was about 20 people who came to the sh shelter overall, we, we'd housed pretty much most of them by the end of the shelter. Some, for one reason or other, haven't been housed. And what, I think there's only one from last year's shelter who still hasn't got a place anywhere. It sometimes takes a while. We, we work on it, and we, of course we work on things all year round. So folk who continually come in and drop in, we're working with them to make sure they're in touch with housing organisations who might be able to help them find a place. So folk come in, they might be with us for three or four months, they find a place and they move on. That's how it is, a moving population. They're, I think they're grateful for what we provide for the period we were able to provide it. Yeah. And finally, have you any plans for the future for a Renewed Hope Trust? Well, obviously to keep going. <laughs> and that's always a challenge in this, uh, the climate we, we live in, in terms of money. Um, we only have two staff, but uh, even so they cost something. And so we need to keep that, that side of things going. Um, we're hoping to develop the, the work at Shrewsbury Chapel over the period. We're not quite sure what direction that's going to take yet, um, but uh, we, we won't be doing anything, anything overnight there. Um, but uh, daytime provision is something that's uh, dear to our hearts, and um, we're 
looking to see what we can do. Hi, my name is uh, Lenny. I've been in the drop-in centre for the last um, two years. Because I was actually homeless um, and a few family problems. Um, I've come to the uh, Hope Trust to find for some help. And uh, they're very um, happy. And they took me on. as you need a night shelter, so I took night shelter on. And the volunteers were fantastic. They was like uh, going to meetings every... Well, sorry, night shelter every Sunday, um, every day of the week. And the free food. Um, for to talk to you if you have any problems with housing or um, if you have any problems with clothes wise. And basically, yes, um, I joined up, done night like shelter, um, to all the volunteers. They all got together, we had fun days out, um, got up in the morning, had showers, um, breakfasts. And Alice and John, I mean, were trustees, um, so if you need more help, uh, let us know, which they have done. Uh, I'm very appreciative of what they've done. So how did you find out about this place? I found out about the, the trust from the Tantra Council and um, I, was actually, I was actually made homeless. Um, then they said to me, why don't you try going to Red Hill, um, the drop-in centre. I thought, where's that? I said, Red Hill. <laughs> so I come out to Red Hill. I managed, Alice managed to ring me up to say, I'll be doing a pop-over. Um, come down, introduce yourself. Um, we'll, we'll meet you here. Come out of a bit of a, that was my first week. Um, but you know, after a week, I got used to it. I said, What we do is we call the um, night shelter. Would you be able to join? Yes, please. Um, as we do, every church has a night shelter in. We can stay overnight, have food, um, clothing, showers. Brilliant. So, yep, I joined up that. Um, the first night was in Wallingham. Um, we actually, that's for just three of these guys, we're chatting with people, having food, then some right time, time for a set down there, if a bit, um, have a nice kit. Next morning, got up, um, had coffees, teas, and breakfast, and I said, Would you be coming to every night shower? So I thought, Yes, please. And every single volunteer, um, Alice, John, Anna, have been just amazing. Um, if people need help, um, and they try their best, if you have to, or you want to, please come to the drop-in in Red Hill. And they'll be happy to talk to you if you've got nowhere to live and you need food. And there's a thing they call the night shelter. Um, come to join Alice, and get yourself signed up, and it's all donations, but really appreciated. So, yeah, that's how I come away. And now I've actually come a volunteer for night shelter, because they've done me proud. Um, I just said, uh, John, would you join any volunteers? Yes, please. I thought, right, OK, I'll come a, after a year and a half, I'll come a volunteer. And so now I've joined. So it's your way of giving something back? It is. Um, they've done me proud, looked after me, um, helped me out a real lot. Um, I've been rehoused now uh, in Rygate. Um, it's just thanks to them guys mm. who have gone out of their way to make people feel relaxed, happy, if you want to chat, or if you feel really down, mm -hmm. uh, don't hold it back. Yeah. Um, go to the local council and say, look, I need, I need to um, have someone to go. Mm -hmm. If they say, we'll go to a uh, drop-in centre in Red Hill, come along, um, they'll be really happy to talk to you. Yeah. If you want to um, do not shelter, mm -hmm. get yourself signed up. And honestly, all the volunteers, the food is absolutely amazing. And they also play a minibus to take you to the, the church as well. So, yeah, they've done, done me proud. And I thought, last year, I thought, mm, do I come a volunteer? And my daughter said, Dad, join up. I come a volunteer. And what I've gone through myself, um, Tantra Council, the job, said, yeah, we know you've gone through. Um, the YMCA stepped in mm -hmm. and said, we're going to try and rehouse you yeah. if we can. Within two weeks, um, I've come through for the YMCA. So we've actually found you somewhere. Yeah, it's in Gate. Fine, and um, yeah, I've been there so eight weeks now, and I thought, now I've been rehoused, time for me to come back to the drop here and say, come a volunteer. So, that's where I'm now. So, just in time for winter and for Christmas as well. I'm Anna, I'm Community Outreach Coordinator for the Renewed Hope Trust. I started off as a volunteer and gradually increased my, my interest in, in this work. It's a real privilege 
helping these people. Um, they are just like you and me. They have just had a bit of bad luck, got behind with their rent maybe, and it's actually quite a privilege to help them. And I would say to anyone, come and try it out because you will get so much out of it. Um, whether it's sitting down and having a meal with them, making them a cup of tea, they can give you so much as well. It's heartbreaking at times, definitely. Um, seeing them through their depression, through their alcoholism, through their bad days, we all have them. Yes. Um, but at the same time, it is seeing those glimmers, glimmers of hope and walking with them through that it's quite special, actually. Um, and being a friend to them when they need it, um, that is, it is quite a privilege and a blessing. We do need your help, I'll be honest. Um, if you want to give us a donation, then please do. However it moves you, it's, it's quite a, a special thing to be part of. As we've said, it is very cold today and it's probably only going to get colder. And I, I sometimes, this is one I think, how on earth do these people manage on the streets? It's, I'm so grateful for, for what I've got at my home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, one of the guys said to me um, yesterday, I, was, I said, it's absolutely freezing. I feel bad about saying that. And he said, well, you've just got to get on with it really, haven't you? And I thought about this overnight. And I thought, suppose their problems are maybe like our, I don't know, just what am I going to do tonight? Um, you know, our little problems, mm. they're different problems for them. Mm. And maybe we bring them hope by giving them something to get up in the morning for. Um, I don't know. But yeah, it is, it is hard to lay in bed you know, snuggled up with your hot water bottle mm. um, and knowing they're in a, a tent. But it must be a warm feeling to know that, like you said, you go through the dark days with them, but if you help to bring them out of that and then maybe see them getting a job, getting rehoused. Yes, yes, we do. We've seen so many of them um, get into their own house and get back into the workplace. And that's the great thing about the night shelter is it gives them 12, 13 weeks to not think about where their next meal is going to be and where they're gonna sleep that night so they have a safe night. Mm -hmm. um, they might be able to concentrate on their emotional stuff, on that job that they might get to and it's kind of a window of opportunity sometimes. It may only take a week. It may take all 12. Mm. It just gives them something else to you know, think about.